Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. How are we this morning? Come now, not here, not here. We are awake this morning. Hallelujah. Let's all just get into an attitude of worship and praise. Let's just set our minds on the Lord this morning. He is wonderful. He has done marvelous things. He has done glorious things. He has done the impossible in our lives. The fact that we are here this morning, God has been good. Amen. Hallelujah. You did not amen wasn't for me. Eh? That amen was supposed to be for God. God has been good to you, right? Hallelujah. Let's just lift our voice and give God some praise this morning. Father, we just want to thank you, O God, for today, Lord. We thank you, O God, for your many blessings. We thank you, Lord, that you know and you see everything, O God, and there is nothing that escapes your attention. Father, you are the God of the universe, O God, and there is nothing too difficult for you to do, O God. Lord, we thank you this morning for everyone that is gathered here, O God. We ask, O God, that you do a new thing in their lives, O God. Let them hear, O God, what you have in store for them, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord, those on the way you hear snare footsteps, that they will come and hear from you, Lord. And Father, I pray that their souls, O God, their hearts will be prepared, good ground for your seed to be sown in, Lord. Father, I ask that your Holy Spirit just move in this place. Take over, Lord. We relinquish control so that you, O God, will have control this morning. Father, we thank you, O God, for what you're about to do, Lord. We wait in expectancy, O God, because we know, Lord, only good things come from you, Lord. And Father, we thank you in advance, Lord, for what you're about to do. We thank you in advance, O oh God, for the worship this morning, Lord. We thank you in advance, O oh God, for the word, O oh God. Lord, for the chains that will be broken, O oh God. Lord, for the souls that will be ministered to, O oh God. For the healing that will take place, Lord. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you this morning. We thank you this morning. Come on, vo come on, people. Lift up your voice. Give God some praise. Father, we thank you. You deserve all the honor. You deserve all the praise, Lord. Father, there is no other one like you, Lord. There is no other God like you, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord. You are the God of the impossible. Lord, victory belongs to you and you alone, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, that you have overcome this world, O oh God. Lord, that you have given us your peace, O oh God, a peace that passes all understanding, Lord. Father, we thank you this morning, O oh God. We worship you. We bless your holy name in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's declare covenant scripture this morning. It's taken from Joshua chapter 1 verse 5. And it says, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Joshua 1 5. And let's declare our declaration scripture for 2024. And it's taken from Judges chapter... Five and verse. Hmm. Okay. It says, Then he made him that remained have dominion over the nobles among the people. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. Hallelujah. Let's just give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, all these screens will cooperate. Hallelujah. Uh, this morning, as I was doing my, um, as I was praying this morning, the Lord laid the scripture on my heart. I would like to share it with you. I don't know who it is for, whether this person is for here or if the person is online this morning, but God has laid this scripture on my heart. And it's Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 27. And it says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for God to do this morning in your life? Is there any situation that you think is out of control that God is not able to do? Nothing he cannot move. There's no mountain. The song says there's no mountain. He cannot move. He's the God of yesterday, today, and forever. What he did before, he's well able to do it again. He has never failed you. He has never let you down. And he will never do it. We can hold on to that, that God is the God of all flesh. And there is nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing that he cannot do. 
Hallelujah. Just give God some praise just for that word. There is nothing that Hallelujah. he cannot do. Your situation is not too far gone that God cannot reach you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So this morning I'll invite the worship team to come and lead us in a time of worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Continue, continue in that atmosphere of praise. He said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. I said, let everything that has breath praise the name of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Because he is good and his mercy endure forever. Amen. We remember what he's done. And we come to lift our hands and lift our voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. So we sing. When I think about the mercies of the Lord, I have a right to sing and shout his praise of joy. Hallelujah. When I think, when I think about the mercies of the Lord, you have a right to sing. When I think about, when I think about the mercy, the think about the Lord. We all have the right to I sing. Have a right to sing and shout His praise for joy. So we say, Massa, Massa, burdens lifted, burdens lifted. Jesus, he is good. Oh, the Lord is good. Yes, and his presence we enjoy. Lift your voice, lift your voice. Say, Massa, Massa. Massa. Hey. Good is lifted. Good is lifted. Good is lifted. Hey, Massa. I have a right to sing. Sing a song. Shout his praise with joy. Oh, and I think about the mercies of the Lord. He has a right to sing. I have a right to sing. And shout his praise with joy. One more time. When I think about him. When I think about his mercy. The mercies of the Lord. To sing. I have a right to sing. Yes, yes, yes. Shout his praise with joy. Lift your voice and declare, say, Massa, Massa. Massa. Yeah. Bird is lifted. Bird is lifted. lifted. Bird is lifted. Oh, Massa. Massa. Bird is lifted. Bird is lifted. Bird is lifted. Yeah, Massa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bird is lifted. Bird is lifted. Sing a song of joy. Somebody sing for 
joy. For the Lord is good. And his presence will enjoy. Let us gather, let us gather around me. Let us gather around. Sing, 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 sing. sing. song of joy. Oh my God, he is good. For the Lord is good. And his presence will enjoy. One more enjoy. time. Come on, gather around, gather around, gather around. Sing. Let us Declare, massa, say, massa, bird is lifted, lifted, bird is lifted, bird oh, is lifted, is lifted, lifted, is lifted, is lifted, lifted, is lifted, is lifted, is lifted, is lifted, is lifted, is lifted, For the Lord is a tower, somebody, and he gives me the power to tear down the works, to tear down the works of the enemy, of the enemy, in a difficult hour, he will crush, 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 he will crush and devour, and bring the power of God, and bring the powers of darkness, underneath, 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 the tower, the Lord is my tower, and he gives, he gives, he gives, and he gives me the power, hallelujah, sing, to tear down the world, of the enemy, of the enemy, who in your difficult hour, in difficult tower, he will crush, he will crush and devour, hallelujah, sing, and bring the powers of darkness underneath my feet, from the top, declare the Lord, Crush any power. Somebody declare that in this place. I the powers of darkness. In this place. Oh, that's the drums. That's the drums. I say the Lord, the Lord is the tower. For the Lord is my tower. Yes, 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 yes. And he gives me the power to tear down, to tear down the world of the enemy. Of the enemy. Who in a difficult tower. Jesus Christ, he will crush and devour, and bring that power, the power, and bring the powers of darkness, one more time, one more time, one more time, I say the Lord is a tower, the Lord is my tower, hey, hey. and he gives me the power, whoa, 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 whoa. to tear down the works of the enemy, oh, in a difficult, in a in difficult, in a difficult hour, he will crush, he will crush and devour. Bring that power. And bring the powers of darkness underneath my feet. Ooh, say, blessed be the name. Say, blessed, blessed be the name, name of the Lord. Yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Somebody shout. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, the Most High. Blessed be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. People the run. righteous run into Declare. it, and they are saved. If the voice say, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, most, the most high. Say, blessed be the name, name, name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Declare 
Jesus is the name. Jesus is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus is the name of the Lord. Somebody praise him. Jesus is the name of the Lord. Praise the name. The Lord. Jesus is the name of the Lord. Jesus is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus Somebody the praise, him. The Lord. praise him. Praise him. Praise him. The Lord. Say the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord. Strong tower. A strong tower. Running, running. Just running to. They are saying. They are saying. Declare that name. That name above every other name. Strong, 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 strong. A strong, strong tower. The righteous. The righteous running. And they are saying, so blessed be that name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Most High. Blessed be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All together now. All together now. Blessed be, blessed be, blessed be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Most High. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Most High. So we say it is raining. It is raining. And we are so in the light of it. Declare it is raining. It, it is, is raining. Somebody, somebody. All around me. In this place. Oh, I can feel it. It's that letter. It's a light of rain. Right on Jesus. Right on Jesus. Ooh. Is it for it? Yes, yes, Until yes, yes. We are and we. In the light of it, it is raining. It is raining. It is raining. Rain, 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 rain. All around me, that light of rain. I can feel it. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? It's a light of rain. Right on the Lord. Right on Jesus. We stand for it. From this place, till we are wet, till we are soaked in the light of it. Fifty of freedom. You can, I you can, can feel it. Somebody pray to Lord. Lord. Pray to Lord. Right on Jesus. Please send for rain. Until we are wet. Until we are soaked in the light of rain. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. It is raining. Hallelujah. All around me. Ay, 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 ay. I can feel yeah. it. And it's a light. It is raining. It is raining. All around. I can feel it. Declare, declare. It's a light of rain. Right on Jesus. Please send for it. Until we are wet. Until we are soaked. We can do that one more time. It is raining.
Somebody praise him, praise him, praise him. He is great and mighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The great are you, Lord. Come on, just lift your hands and declare in this place. Great are you, Lord. Great and mighty is your name. Hey. Great are you, Lord. Somebody declare city of freedom. Great are you, Lord. Yes, you are great and greatly to be praised. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. That's it, that's it. Great. Lift it up, lift your hands, lift your voice. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great, great are you, Lord. We declare you are great in this place. Great. Take it up, take it up, say great, 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 great. Great are you. Just declare, just declare and lift the name of Jesus. Great. Oh, great are you, great are you, Lord. Great are the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, 
Yes, 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 yes. Kaya la da 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 ba ba. Imbratos kampala ba bosha ya la ba. Great are you, great are you, Lord. We worship in this place. That's who you are. No one can compare. We declare that He is great and great is to be praised. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rapa Pakaya, the Alpha, the Omega, the Beginning. He is the End. Makaposa, Imbrade de 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 de, Swakapale de mo, Shakapaya na lava. Great are You, Great are You, Great are You, Lord. Two more times in this place, out of your belly, declare that great is the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Imbradaya, Imbradaya, Rapos Kapaya Rama, Great are you, Lord. One more time with a loud voice, declare, great and mighty is the Lord. Somebody give lift your some voice praise. and praise him. Give God some praise in this lift place. Lift your voice and praise Give God some praise in this Arraba place. Baba 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. 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 H
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you only know this morning. If you only know, if you could tap in this morning to know what God has been doing since the service started this morning. He has been fighting and waging war on your behalf without you knowing it. He has been moving things out of the way. He has been fighting your battle. He is Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. You can't do what God could do. When you praise him, God works on your behalf. Come on, people. This is not no joke. Enough for joke and fun and play. You come here for business this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you only know what God is doing for you at this moment, you won't be still. You won't be silent. You won't be silent. The word of God says, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? We put problems in front of God. We put situations in front of God. We put everything in front of God. God says he is the God of all flesh. There is nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing too difficult for him to do. His hand is not short that he cannot reach, you know. His ears is not heavy that he cannot hear your cry. He said even before you spoke it, he knew what you was going to say. And while you are speaking, he has already answered this is the kind of God we serve and you want to stay quiet? You want to shut your mouth? You want the devil to steal your praise? When the devil steals your praise, your victory is gone. If he gets your praise, he gets everything. Come on, people. Come on, people. Give God some praise in this place. Give God some praise. You didn't come here for me. You didn't give, you're not giving me the praise. You're giving God the praise. Because you know what he has done for you. You know the situation that you are going through. You know what God has done. Let me tell you something. See, every song that was sung this morning, if it wasn't for you all, it was for me. I want to thank God for every single song that was sung this morning. He is a miracle-working God. There is nothing that our God cannot do. There is nothing he cannot do. You see, we can't understand that because there are, we have limitations. But God doesn't have limitations. He is an infinite God. Hallelujah. Sometimes I wish you could just, just reach out to God, tap in and feel what God is doing and know for surety what he is doing in your life. God is good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We will leave all the announcements and everything else afterwards. I'm going to bring on a man of God now to bring the word. Hallelujah. Come on, open your heart. Open your mouth this morning. Give God some praise. I pray God opens your heart to hear, open your ears to hear this morning what he is saying to the church. Hallelujah. I will, I will invite Evangelist Marcus to come and bring the word this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, give Hallelujah. God some praise. Give God some praise. Give God God some praise. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord this morning. Amen. Someone, you all could do better than that. Open your mouth and thank God. God is good. Amen. He have kept us from last year into this year. So many people have been dead under the ground. Hallelujah. I'm sure all of us could testify we know somebody that is no more. But by his grace and his mercy, we are here this morning. Father, we want to thank you. We want to praise you. Come on, come on, somebody. Lift up your hands this morning. Bless the Lord for his goodness. Thank him for his mercy. It is by his grace we are here. He said if not for his grace, we would all be consumed. So this morning, we thank you, Father. We give you all honor and glory. Merciful God, we thank you for your word this morning. May it take root in our lives and in our heart, O oh God. May we never fail to practice what we are reading each and every day. We pray, God, that you will take full control of today's proceedings and let your name alone be glorified. We thank you for our pastor, his wife, Pastor Vashti, and all the leaders, O oh God, continue to bless and strengthen them. We look forward for you bringing back our pastor very soon in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may all... Greet somebody. I was going to say sit, but I forget the routine. Greet somebody. Come on, greet somebody this morning.
Greet somebody this morning. Hallelujah. Tell somebody you love them. It is good to see you. It is good that you are here. You could have been beneath the ground, but you are alive today. We bless you. We bless the Lord. Thank somebody. Tell somebody this is good to see you. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The scriptures say, I was glad when they say, come, let's go into the house of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Hug. Greet somebody. We appreciate you being here. We thank you for being here today. It's a joy to see you. May the Lord keep you. May it be well with you and your family. In your going out and your coming in, we pronounce the blessing of the Lord upon you. We say no evil plan of the enemy will come to pass in your life. We speak wellness from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are a chosen people of the most high God. Come on somebody, greet somebody. Greet somebody. The scriptures say by this we will know that we are in Christ. By the love we have for one another. Come on somebody, spread some love today. Spread some love today. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. You may all have your seats. Amen. Hallelujah. Hmm? Yeah, that's some people. Say what? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a blessing for us to be alive today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to say some special thanks to our apostle, Pastor Vashti, for all the encouragement to be up here. Hallelujah. Like I always say, it's not easy. Amen. I want to thank Prophet Hassan Dong in the back. I just always forget to mention her, but this way it all started. Amen. In the Usher department. I remember when we used to go in one another house. Every time we have a meeting, we used to be in somebody else's house. And, you know, she always encouraged us, even for 20 minutes, 15 minutes, to bring the word. So we'll have to prepare scripture and minister to the group. Amen. I say thanks to Prophet Hassan for the push as well. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. I was always forget to do it. But today I remember. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for his grace and mercy upon each and every one of our lives. Amen. This morning message is titled, A Call to Holiness. Amen. Now, it may not please all of us, but like I always say, the truth must be spoken. Amen? Amen? Now, we know from ancient times, even from the beginning of time, God, when he created Adam and then created Eve, he placed them in a special place. Amen? He warned them in a special place. He didn't leave them to mingle with everything else. So he gave them some instructions. Amen? Even when he called Abraham out of his country, he said, Come from here. Separate yourself from these people. Amen? And go to a specific place. So we know for a fact that God always requires us to be holy and a set apart people. Amen? So a simple definition of holiness is simply defined as separated and set apart from everything that is not of God. Amen? Now that's not the dictionary. That is my thing. But everything that is not of God, we must separate ourselves from it. Amen? Hallelujah. We're going to start off this morning by looking at the scripture that is the title message. Amen. And then we're going to go from there. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 1, 13 to 16. 1 Peter 1, 13 to 16. And I'm reading from the NIV version because I like that so much. So I'll just correspond to all of them. This does help me understand a little better. Yes, he said, therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children... Note well, he says, as obedient children, not disobedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had, past tense, when you were living in 
ignorance. So everything that we do is against God's will is a sign that we are still ignorant. Everybody agree, right? Good. So everything that we do that is against the will of the Lord is showing that we have not matured to spirituality that God wants us to go, and we are still ignorant of some of the facts. Amen? But just as he who has called you in holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. So why God has called us to be holy? Because he of himself is holy. Amen? He of himself is holy. And he wants us not to be ignorant and behave in our former behavior that we had when we was in ignorance. Somebody lift up your right hand this morning. Say, I speak over my life. I declare today every spell of ignorance. I break you now in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Pray that prayer. Every spell of ignorance be broken. Be broken over my life. Be broken over my thoughts. Be broken over my family. Be broken over everything I do. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. How many of us know ignorance does behave like a disease, right? It go and come sometime. Amen? It go and come. It will always be there. Sometimes we operate well and tomorrow we operate in ignorance. It's like a disease. It go and come like a fever. May the Lord deliver us from that spell in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. So like I said, God is calling us out to be a holy people. He said, therefore, come out from them and be what? Separated. Says who? Me? Says you? No. Says the Lord. He said, touch not unclean things and I will do what? So if we are touching things that are unclean, will the Lord receive us? No. Amen? We must do what he say for we to be received by him. Remember he said all our righteousness is as filthy rags. So God don't deal with nothing that is unclean. And we have evidence scripture to prove. We're going to go to Revelation 4 verse 8. You can also read Isaiah 52 in, in correspondence with this 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Amen. We're not going to go there. You all could read it. Isaiah 52. But we're going to Revelation 4, verse 8. He said, each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under their wings. Day and night, they never stop saying this specific thing that God wants us to do. Here's what they say. They say, holy, holy is who? The Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. So from then time to now, God is still holy. You don't change. Amen? So when we behave in a particular way that today we're holy, tomorrow we are holy, we don't represent God because God don't change. For the angels and the beasts to continually sing holy, holy, which means from beginning to this present time until he come, he will forever be a holy God. So he have called us to be holy people. Now it is not easy, and I am not saying that I am there, but we are heading there in Jesus' name. Amen? So we must cut out everything that represents contrary to the holiness of our God. Amen? It's evident, even when Moses went to visit the burning bush, before he could go close, a voice told him something. He said, take off that nasty, dirty shoes you have. Why? Because this ground where you're about to put your foot on is holy. Not because the dirt itself is holy, but because the presence of the Lord was within the vicinity, he cannot come with nothing that is dirty before God. So he had to take it off. We understand, Amen. So we must shake off everything that represents dirt. It doesn't matter what it looks like. We must shake it off. Holiness is a renewing of mind, thoughts, through Jesus Christ. Understand that no sinner, none whatsoever, could never go close to God. There's only one instance. Unless he or she is asking for forgiveness. So we have people that they're living all over in this world and they say they just pray. It's a lie. 
Let us pray, yes, but not to the God that we serve. Not to the true and holy God who holy, holy. It's a lie. We agree. It's a lie. They could pray all they want. Say they're praying. They are not praying to God. They think they are praying to God, but you don't hear. Unless you're asking for forgiveness, he answers that prayer. And then you have received the the, the, the acceptance by him to walk into the holiness. Amen? So no sinner can go close to God or even approach God unless he's asking for forgiveness. To live a holy life, we must develop the characteristics and the nature of Jesus Christ. Galatians 2.20 Galatians 2 verse 20 He said, I have been crucified with who? And I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. So for us to walk holy, Christ must live in us. And unbelievers don't have Christ living in them. So when they pray, they ain't praying to nobody. They're wasting precious time. And they will argue with us as believers, and sometimes we fall into the trap, and we say, yes. The Hindu man and all the man that worship all idol gods are say we just pray to God you know, and sometimes in ignorance we say yeah we agree is a lie we must not agree with them amen. amen they are not praying to the same God we serve in amen, amen. hallelujah he said I no longer live but who Christ live in me he said the life I now live in this body I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me so it is by the grace of christ that we can walk in holiness before god it is only because of that that we have the opportunity to say father forgive me somebody give god a clap today for his grace amen, amen. other than that we of ourselves could not have gone close to this god but it's by the son jesus christ leviticus 20 26 God called them from evil in the old days, and we as believers in this present time must walk holy before the Lord our God. You are to be holy to me. To who? God. Because I, the Lord, am holy, and I have set you apart from the nations to be my own. Who are we? We belong to ourselves? No. We belong to God. He has cleansed us with a purpose, not for our selfish desires and selfish gains. Amen? It is because of his mercy we have been set apart. We must always remember that. Amen? Why? He said, draw near to me and he will draw near to us. James 4 verse 8. If we don't draw near to God, there's no way he come in close to us. We know that Christ has died for our sins. But it's not until we have accepted Christ we have this grace to go before God. In our filthy state, we cannot approach God. Amen? He said, draw nigh to me because I will then draw nigh to you. He said, come near to God and he will come near to you. So it takes a process. He's not forcing us. We must come. Amen? And then he will come to us. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So he gave us criteria that we must come close to him with though. It's not just to go anyhow. We must wash our hands from all sinful nature and purify our hearts. All the wicked thoughts we like to harbor in our heart. Amen? That when Apostle or myself or Pastor Vashti or even Prophet Esan or even um, Minister Jeremy or the Kaneskezi minister in up here and you're watching the congregation is like all the fire and arrows at the minister. Because what he's saying and pleasing and your face so angry. It's like if I could have killed him with my eyes, he dropped dead. It's a lie. It can't happen. Amen? It's a lie. Like me or don't like me. And understand that I'm walking in the anointing as an apostle. So if you attack any one of the ministers there, you're attacking your apostle and you're in for a problem. So don't do it because he appoints us to be here. And we must speak the truth whether we like it or not. We must change. As long as we continue in our ways and our attitudes and our behavior that we say is ours, sorry to say, the ship will come and sail and we will be left behind. Because God is coming for our holy people. All of us know for a fact, and it is certain that we could accept Christ, but that doesn't mean we save him. That doesn't mean we save him. 
Even though the scripture says we confess Christ with our mouth and in our hearts we believe you shall be saved. We could accept Christ and not save you. Know? Why I say this? Jesus told the disciples, he said, look at this. He said, these people say with their mouth, Lord, Lord, but they're far from me. And then he went on to say in our next verse, that depart from me, I know you not. Why? The word know you not, not means that we have no relationship with God. He don't know us. How many of us come here every day? We come. A newcomer, you're coming to the church. You know Apostle Lou because he's here. You're seeing him every morning. But if I go to Apostle and ask Apostle, you know a particular sister or a particular brother, you will say, no, I don't know them. Why? Because you have not made yourself known to him. But you know him, but he don't know you. And you're in the congregation every single day. So if I go to him and say, Apostle, it has somebody that's come there, where to do so and so, where give them, and I ask something that really out of the way, right? I say, Apostle, that person who $3,000. He say, but I don't know this person, how I will just give them money. So it's the same procedure with Christ. He will say to us, depart from us, not because we don't know him, but because he don't know us. We don't have no relationship with him. When the morning come, we wake up as apostles say, and we just dust out and gone. We flash him. We don't pray. So there is no communication between you and God for you to say, yes, I know this person. Think about Cornelius. He was a sinner. But because of his good deeds, and we know no good deeds will justify any flesh no more, right? But because of Cornelius' good deeds, God said we cannot allow this man to go to hell. He sent Peter to go to visit him to make sure he baptized to enter into the kingdom. Amen? So we must walk holy in order for God to recognize us. The minute we don't do it is a problem. Amen? So we're going now. I'm not going to be too long today. Please. I'm really not going to be. Hallelujah. Amen? Whenever we find ourselves conforming to the former behavior that we had before, we have not fully repented. We have not fully repented. Why I say this? Because the scripture said that, Behold, all things have become new, as the Kaneskesi used in new creation last week, right? We agree. No new thing could never have old things inside of it. The scripture say in the book of Matthew that you could not pour new wine into old wine skin. The wine skin will burst and run out all the, the wine because the wine skin old. So it's the same manner. If we have old behavior, old mannerism, the spirit of the, God, the Lord is not the old. Sorry, it's the truth. No, we're behaving like we're in spirit because we accept Christ. That is familiar spirit because we know to do it. It is not God. He don't dwell in unclean temple. So when we behave in all how and carrying on all how and all manner of behavior we display on a daily basis, but we under the banner of Christians, but we're not walking as such. The spirit of the Lord is not there. Amen? And the people on the outside knows it because when they see a behavior, they say, that's a Christian. You know? They say there's a Christian. But some or the other, we of ourselves can't see that we're in error. May God deliver us, deliver us from ignorance in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So anytime we behave in the same way, cursing and carrying on, the first thing could fly out of your mouth is a mother so and so. When somebody do you something, the first thing could come to your mind. Is evil thoughts to our brother or sister as soon as they offend you. Something is wrong. Check yourself. The scripture says, bless those who curse you. So how could the first thought come to you to so do evil? It says also, never for we to render evil for evil. So even though somebody do we wrong, we must not render evil for evil. But yet we think in evil. Yet we think in wickedness. Something is wrong. We must examine ourselves. Amen? What does it mean to repent? He said, not only to change our thinking, but change our actions as well. We must be opposite to everything that is command. So when the world doing command things that they want us to follow, we must say no. We mustn't partake. Why? Because we are set apart, a holy nation. Amen? 
we must represent God. Amen? You all agree? All of this agree. Holiness is an always call from God. It's not a part-time job. Leviticus 11, 43 to 45. Do not defile yourself by any of these creatures. Do, do not make yourself unclean by means of them or be made unclean by them. So what the world do, we mustn't do it. We mustn't make ourselves unclean as they do. We mustn't do it. How many of us as believers, if any one of us here used to party, we might have seen all them Monday or Tuesday down the road in our band. How many of us still dilly dabbling and mixing up with the things of the world? Because nobody has see an apostle not done day. But don't be afraid, the Holy Spirit no. And we have not taken example from Ananias and Sophia, and we determined to continually tell lies to the Holy Spirit. And we're not taking example that after the husband fall long dead, the wife come not too far after and carrying on with the same manner. Peter said, they just carry out your husband by his foot. For his behavior. But how many of us are continually doing that? Apostle don't have to know. We of ourselves must know we're doing wrong and come out of it. Amen. We don't need apostle to stand up over we back like some of us drivers just behave. As soon as the police not there, we blaze down the shoulder. Amen. We stop all how and do what we want because the police not watching. But when the police there, we straight as a pin on the road. It's so some believers behave. We must come out of that mentality. Verse 44, I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourself and be holy because I am holy again. Do not make yourself unclean by any creature that move along the ground. So even the animals, you must make yourself unclean with them. I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourself. Next verse, my brother. And I am the Lord who brought you up out of Egypt to be your God. Whose God you want to be ours, but we must let him. Therefore be holy because I am holy. Amen? So he's calling us to holiness, period. Sadly, holiness is no longer a practice in many of our believers' lives today. Amen? Sadly, it is no longer a practice. We don't like to practice it. But we sit in church every single day and we pretend to be holy and we behave all how when we leave the church. Amen? As soon as we step out the door, we go on into a beast mode. How many of us watch Transformers? When it first come out, before it was Transformers, it was beast, beast something, beast mode or something. It was, there was in the form of animals. When they transformed, they used to transform it in the vehicle, but they used to be in the form of animals. Before they upgraded to the cars. How many of us are like that? When we leave the church, we transform back into beast mode. Amen? How many of us as the old long time movie where we so watch before God saved me, the gargoyles in the night, they turn into raving monsters, but in the day they are stone, gently and humble. How many of us behave so? That if your sister offends you, you tear she down with your words, with your behavior. Amen. You see all manner of things behind the back and see all kind of things. But in the morning we come and we smile at one another and we hug, which is nice and lovely. But the true essence of Christianity, we have forgotten it. May God deliver us in Jesus' name. As Apostle says, silence in heaven. But that is nothing. The truth must be preached. Amen. Amen. Matthew 23, 23. Matthew 23, verse 23. And don't feel I'm speaking to you alone. I'm speaking to myself because I'm not perfect. Nobody, but we're working towards that. So we are sounding warning that we must continue in holiness always. Amen. Remember the scripture say, iron sharpened iron. No man does take a piece of wood to sharpen a cutlass. Iron. So we must sharpen one another. He said we must sing psalms and hymns to one another. Psalmists say, and administer 
admonishing one another in words and songs. Why? To keep us on the right track. So when a sister say, or a brother say, your tail long, and I use it in nice words, take it with a pinch of salt and say, thank you, sister, brother. I will fix it. Not who is she to tell me, and who is them to say this. No, that is the wrong approach. We will never change when we take that approach. Amen? Who is them to tell me this? They feel they're holy and we start to sing all this song. No man is holy, but we strive in there. And the scripture said that we must confess our faults to one another. So when a brother come and say, your nose big, nice words. Don't take it in a vexed way. Say thank you and move. It is difficult even for me, but we must do it. Because it is the only way we will get to that part that Christ wants us to go. Amen? Matthew 23, 23. He said, woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. Look at the word Jesus called them. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, drills, and comet, but you have neglected the most important matter of the law. Here we say justice, mercy, faithfulness. They're neglecting all that, but they're doing all the other good things. You should have practiced the latter, which means you should have practiced mercy and justice. Without neglecting the former. So we must do all and not neglect some. Amen? Amen. Go to 25 to 28. Same 23, 25 to 28. He said, Woe to you, teachers of the laws and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and the dish, meaning that we bathe every day. We smell nice, we look good. Come down the old day, brother, you're looking good. But inside of us is where the problem lies. He said, but inside they are full of grease, greed, and self-indulgence. Meaning that we're seeking after things of ourselves, not after the kingdom. Next verse. He said, blind Pharisees, first clean the inside of the cup and the dish. And then the outside also will be clean. So we must cleanse our hearts from all the behaviors that we have that is not of God. Amen? In order for the outside to shine. If the outside shining and the inside have problem, is a difference. We all know people that look healthy and strong every day. And then you hear a man fall along dead, boo They say, but how? It's because the inside dirty, but the outside look good. The scripture used these simple basic things so we to have understanding of what he's trying to say. He said, woe to you teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs which look beautiful on the outside but on the inside are full of bones of dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. May God deliver us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen? Remember the scriptures say, without any holiness, it is impossible for us to see the face of God. Amen? No man will ever see God without a holy lifestyle. Go to Hebrew 12. Before you go to Romans 12 verse 1 to 2. Romans 12 verse 1 to 2. He said, therefore I urge you brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your body as a living sacrifice. How? With stain? No. With dirt? No. With mud? No. With wickedness and evil? No. Holy and pleasing to God. So our holiness must meet God's standard, not our own. That is why it's only he that could bring us to that place. It must meet his standard in order for us to enter the ship when it comes. Amen? Amen? This is your true and proper worship. We must meet his standard. Hebrew 12 verse 14. I said no man will ever see the face of God without holiness. Hebrew 12 verse 14. He said, make every effort to live in peace first and foremost with everyone and to be what? Holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So we could accept Christ, but if we don't walk 
as holy people. When the ship come and we go to board the ship, somebody will stop us by the door and say, sorry, your boarding pass has expired and you have refused to renew it. May that never be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May that never be our portion. First Thessalonians 4 verse 3 to 4. First Thessalonians 4 verse 3 to 4. It is God's will that we should be sanctified. So it is he will and he purpose to clean us, right? That we should avoid sexual immorality. That each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable. How we must control our body? Holy and honorable. We can't be shack up. And come into church every morning. And before the anointing of the Holy Spirit start to flow through the worship like this morning, we start to carry on. And we start. But when we go home, we live in a life that is unpleasant to God. And we say the Holy Spirit woke in. Yeah, he woke in. But just not in you. Bible said the Holy Spirit can't dwell in no unclean temple. Am I lying or am I telling the truth? Say he can't dwell in no unclean temple. So when you start performing and vibrating as apostles and you roll and you clear away this whole line of chair down the road so they had to put it back up. They say that sister on that real anointing boy. Glory be to God. Anoint way. When? How? Which part? <laughs> and you're living with a man. As a brother you're walking around your pants below your bottom. You're burning cigarette. And we try to twist all scripture so we could smoke and drink the rum. There's no scripture that say a man shouldn't drink and Timothy tell his son to take a little for the worms. And we know all the scripture. Yes, we know. But there's a scripture that speaks about drunkenness. And it also tells us that as kings and priests, we ought not to be under the influence of alcohol. So these scriptures are evident enough for we not to do it. But yet we purpose in our heart that we must cut sours. Because there's no scripture that says no. Amen. Do we think God is pleased with this behavior? No, he is not. Amen? We not. Sorry. Pastor Vashti and all the other ministers went down last week. They speak about our dress code and our mannerism as believers. But yet you refuse to take heed. We still doing all the things. And we have seen it in scripture, but we say we just obey God. So which word are God we obeying? Which one? I don't know. Because if the word of God show us here that we must present with body holy, control our body in a holy manner, and honorable, we know the word honorable means that it is without reproach. Nobody should say that they see any one of us half naked down the road. Or winding up in a barn on somebody down the road. That is not honorable behavior. Or with a rum bottle, stand up throwing something in we head. That is not honorable. But we are believers under believers name but we're not walking as believers may god deliver us in jesus name amen, amen. first thessalonians 1 verse 4 we reach holiness is not optional as a christian it is not a part-time job where we work today and tomorrow we are the day off no it don't work so it's every living day 24 7 365 we agree it is not a part-time job we must get there it is we that give ourselves the most headache. Why? Because we like to fight God too much. Amen? We like to move like Jacob and wrestle with God. Amen? But plenty of us are not going to come out with a limp with we hip, you know? Plenty of us might end up worse. If our men try it and they're below the ground without Christ. And sadly, hell is their portion. Amen? How many of us as believers feel that everything is normal? We do what we want. Ash Wednesday morning, you line up in front of the priest and you go and you put a cross on your head. I told you, as they say right here. All these people that have lined up and went there, all of them on a straight boat down to the pit of hell. And I'm going to tell you why I'm not lying. Do any man open their mouth in church and confess when they go for the ashes? No. The priest put it on their head. And they leave and go. Nobody will genuinely open and say, God forgive me for Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Nobody will say that. But they just take the ashes and they go on. 
That do help you. It do help you. The only way is through Jesus Christ, walking in obedience and holiness. Amen? Amen. So we could do what we want and feel we're fooling God is a lie. It come like a young lady I spoke to her this week. I said, what you just be playing all them gospel for when she opened the business place in the morning? One set of gospel, moving like Saul when he had an evil spirit on him. You understand? That how she moving like Saul when he had an evil spirit. He called David. David, come and play because David soothed his spirit with the nice music, right? And as soon as David done, demon troubling him. That how she moving. Play gospel this morning. And before the day done, the music changed to something that I don't even want to mention. Amen? But what did us do, oh man? And how did us shoot? And how did us do? I said, ma'am, what all that us before early in the morning? She can't answer because she don't have a clue. Because we feel we could papi show this God. We feel God is a mockery now so we could do what we want and yeah. Because you know they have a saying that nobody going in hell, right? We agree. They say nobody going in hell because God is too loving to send anybody to hell. But apostles have proven to us and show us many times people don't go to hell because God sent them. We go because we choose to go. Because yeah. the scripture says hell wasn't designed for no man. It was for the devil and his angels. Amen? So when we feel we could papi show God, sadly, we will be left behind. Amen? So we're going to 2 Timothy 1.9. Holiness is not optional. It is not part that we choose when we want to in Christianity. It is every day. He said, be holy for I am holy. So no power could manifest. We in the year of dominion, not so. We cannot dom dom dominate anything if we're not walking in holiness with God. Because holiness means that we have become one with him. Because he is holy, we start to walk holy too. Amen? The power of God flow. But when we cross, and we're not in hands with him, right you and fighting him, no power go flow. Sometimes we wonder, we pray every day, and we're asking God for certain things to take come yet, because we have fully come into alignment with God yet. So you're holding it back till we get there. Amen? May God take us there in Jesus' name. Second Timothy 1.9. He has saved us and called us to a holy life. What did he do? He saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose. So the holy life that he has called us to is for our purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. So from the beginning, God purposed that we must walk holy. Amen? God purposed that we must walk holy. And since holiness is so important to God, that he wants us to follow suit, we must get it right and understand what it is and what it's not. Amen? We must know what it is and what it is not. Now, holiness doesn't mean that you come down the road in a long white gong white from head to toe and you have them little thing as where the angel just half zinging over your head you know that is no holiness or you walk out like the priest with your big bible below your arm the biggest bible in the world and six seven men following you coming down the road the opening door for you they're driving you all over i'm not saying these things is not good and nobody shouldn't say they don't want it but at the end of the day that is not holiness Many people feel that is a sign of holiness. It is not. Holiness doesn't mean that we disobedient to the word of the Lord. God said they will do we doing, no self we doing. He said though practice is no self we practicing. There are many people today say they are Christian, but they're practicing wizardry and witch behavior. Amen. Putting salt in bag and all kind of thing and throwing my people door. And using all manner of scare tactics. Like the other day, I go and run in the savannah and I see a pigeon inside a calabash. How many of us know what calabash is, right? They cut it and they take the go the inside. And they put it right in the road where everybody jogging. Now if you see people running around, running around, and when they meet up on this calabash, it's like they meet God, stand up there, they throw themselves on the side too. So I pass, I say, these people and them, all this is scare tactics. It has no power in that. It has no power. But it is scare tactics. It is people who mingling with spirits. 
How many of you saw the big demon that was pulling around during the carnival time? They had a next one with a, a skull on the ground and they're saying it's something spiritual in the carnival. I said to any man who are online, I know we believers here don't go no carnival. It's a lie. Amen? You that are online that visit them Monday, Tuesday, you better go before God. Oh. Because when them spirit that they say is a spiritual thing lasts so you. Do, and I'm saying it on behalf of my pastor, don't call a pastor 12 o'clock in the night, waking him up out of his bed to be no prayer where we are when he should be sleeping. You know where you want and get your devil? Go there and get rid of it. When you make your mind that you want to change, call him. Don't call him to waste time and have him breaking night rest. Don't do it. Don't call Pastor Vashtu or any one of the leaders to become prayer where we are on your behalf. And as apostles are saying, why is them praying you sleeping? Because you're on phone. You go where you went and get it, you know what to do. When you desire to change. Because it makes no sense you're calling to pray. Yes, we want to pray. We want to see you delivered. But it makes no sense calling to pray. And next day you're going back. Amen? I pick up two passengers the other day. Carnival ain't done two weeks yet. She talking about carrying she child to play next year. In the back of my vehicle going along the road. She and she boyfriend. They're planning already for next year. They ain't studying if Christ could come in between. Eh? They're planning for next year already. I say, God, you really have to deliver some of us, boy. Because we bent on our way of destruction. Amen? So I say to you, when you get a devil, only come and bother a person when you want to be delivered for real. And you want to stay away from it. Don't come and play. Amen? We don't have time for that. So I'm going to give you some points on how to achieve holiness. Now we know that it is to be separated and separate apart, right? And we get, we're going to go to 1 Peter 2 verse 9. We must be different from everybody else. We mustn't follow after the things of the world, amen? But you are a chosen people. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. God counts us as special when we accept his son Jesus. Amen? So he set us apart. Which means what take other people can't take you is a lie. Which means what hurt other people cannot hurt you. Because God has chosen you and he has put the seal on your head that you are a special people. Lift up your right hand. I declare today that we will walk in this assignment in the mighty name of Jesus. We will walk in this assignment in the name of Jesus. So you are special. They could do what they want when you turn your back. And they do anything with your food. Eat. Belch hearty. Because no power could touch you. Because you are chosen and set apart for God's purpose. No wickedness could touch you no matter where you go. But you must walk holy. You, you must walk in alignment with God's word. Otherwise you're in for problems. We must walk holy. Amen? And the devil will not prevail against you because of your holiness. God will protect you on all sides. He say that. That is his word. He don't go back on it. Amen? Two. Holiness, we must make it a habit of being in one mind with God. Which means what God hates, and that is a strong word because God don't hate we must hate also. Amen? And what God loves, we must love also. We must measure everything by his standard and not our own. So not because people doing it, we want to do it because that is style, is a lie. We in for problems. That is not God's standard. When the Holy Spirit took you when you're coming out the door anymore and tell you, don't put on that. You better turn back and take it off. Because if we come with it, we're telling God we don't business what you say. You could preach from now until you send your son. We're going to wait. And you come and we come down the road and somebody tell your sister, that is not appropriate. You get mad. How she could tell me that? And you know for yourself that God choked you in your heart home. He said, don't do. He said, don't do. You're going to work early. Stop it. He said, hold on a minute. Don't go. But you get up and you go. You get a flat. Easy way. Amen? You get a flat. Worse does happen to other people. You get a flat. 
Because now we realize that your disobedience are must stop you by all means necessary. So you get a flag. You say, God, how you gonna stop me this morning? It's because he wanted you to stay for a purpose. Amen? So we must be in one mind with God. The only way we must be, could be in one mind is by our holy lifestyle and living. Amen? We must stand out from the others. People must be able to say we are Christians and must differentiate between us and the world. We can't tie together. It don't work. Amen? We can't tie together. Just as night and day can mix, they don't ever come together. When one comes, the other one must leave. That is how it works. It's the same procedure with us. If we have Christ, everything that is not of Christ must leave. Amen? And we must measure everything, like I said, by the standards of his word. Not by how much we know, but by how much we do. So the standard is not how much we know. We could know the Bible cover to cover. If we are practicing it, it is a waste of time. It is useless. Because we only read it every day and we put it down. But to actually practice it, we are not doing it. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 16. We must practice it. It is not by how much we know, but by how much we do. For who have known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? What he say? He say, but we have the mind of who? We have the mind of Christ. Which means we must continually to walk in oneness with him. The mind of Christ can't tell you to take up a cigarette and smoke. Or go down the road and take a bottle and drink some rum. Or cuss up the neighbor. That is not the mind of Christ. If we do that, then Christ is not there. Oh, as my wife does rough me up, there. English, amen? Christ is not there. Amen? Sorry, honey. Amen? Buy from the old school, so I say E-N-D. E-N-D. E-D. Not there at all. He's not there, amen? So anything that we do that misrepresents God, God is not in us. And like I said, the unbeliever sees it. And it is a bad representation of us as believers for our God. Amen? Remember the Bible said that we are ambassadors for who? Christ. Ambassador means that I represent. I stand on behalf of. Amen? So I can't stand on behalf of and then behaving like myself. That don't work. Then the person that are standing on behalf of are not representing them. Amen? Hallelujah. Philippians 2 verse 5. Philippians 2 verse 5. He said, let your relationship with one another have the same mindset as Christ. The ne our next verse says, let this mind that is in Christ be in you. Which means that we must be in oneness with the same mind. Amen? Go to 1 John, James 1, 22 to 23. Like I said before, it's not how much we know, but how much we do. Practice makes perfect. We agree. Do not merely listen to the words that Apostle preach. Or Pastor Vashti, or Evangelist Marcus, or Minister Jeremy, or Prophetess Anne, or Deacon Eskezi, or, or Deacon Ellis, or Deacon Saleh, or anybody that has the opportunity by the grace of the Lord to come here. Do not merely listen to the words. And so deceive who? Me? Deceive yourself. Do what it what? Say. That is what we must do. What it say. So when it says thou shalt not commit adultery, we should not do it. It says we must not live in fornication, we must not do it. We can't be living all that we want and say God walking in we boy. And we laying hands on people and casting out demons. Which demon? Where it will go? Where it will go? And then when the person leaves, they say, but this sister praying or this brother praying for me and how come I'm not getting delivered? Little do they know that you live in all how? Demon ain't coming out. So in other words, they say, I don't want this God. Where in scripture have we seen demon challenge Jesus when Jesus say, come out? 
The only place we see demon even open their mouth is when they ask, what you come to do with we now? You come to kill we? Other than that, de demon never challenged Jesus or any of the apostles. We see demon challenge people. The guys and them, the sons of, of Sceva, when he tried to cast out the demon in the name of Paul God, demon challenged him. But we have believers who have the mind of Christ and walk in Christ. Why demon challenging us day and night? Why people sending spirit and it crawling all in the roof that we can't sleep? It's because we are not walking in alignment with God in holiness. If God said that he will protect us from all these things, then why are these things tormenting us? I'm not saying that we wouldn't go through trial, but this is not the trial you mean for, the, for demon to trouble we? No. Why would demon trouble us after he have said, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon these things. So we aren't treading on them then. They treaded on us. Why? Because we are not walking in alignment with the word of the Lord. When we say demon go, demon sort of us ask, where you want me to go? That is what the demon is supposed to tell. The demon is not supposed to tell you, I'm not going. I'm not going. The demon is not supposed to tell us that. There are people in scripture that got delivered from demon even before hands were laid. Even before Paul, there's a scripture that said even Paul handkerchief touched people. His shadow, demons come out of people and go. Where is this power? Is God not working? No. But it's because we are a stiff, naked people from since in the days of old that we're not walking in full alignment. And I say full because we walk in part way. Full alignment with God, why we could have problems. We can't be in full alignment as Christ was with him. In full alignment. Remember he said, I come to do the will of who? The Father. So he wasn't about nothing concerning him. Amen? So when he speak, demon must listen. If we fall in full alignment as he did, demon can't trouble us. Witches and wizards will cry. Where you come around here for? They will ask you that. When you step on your workplace... The people that plotting evil against you, they will leave and go because you are pair. But if we live in zigzag, as my father does say, and all how we try, we two sided like a 25 cents. Heads on one side, tail on the next side. We have problems. Demon will forever challenge us. Demon will forever fight us. Not because of anything that God is not doing, but we must cleanse our ways for God to work fully in us. Amen? We agree or we disagree? Hallelujah. Silence in heaven. To God be the glory as we apostles say amen. amen. Having the mind of Christ means putting ourselves last. With the full understanding, God's plan is what we must bring forth. Amen. Because it is for his glory that we have been put here, not for ourselves. So we must put ourselves last in the pursuit of Christ first. The apostle Paul wrote, he said, I forget everything behind. Why? Because he pressed into a mark. He said he count everything he have as nothing in the possession that he must get Christ. We must think that way. How many of you desire Christ today? Amen? Amen. I know I am. Amen? So we must put away things that misrepresent God and cause us not to walk holy. Number three, obedience is key to holiness. There is no other way to maintain holy lifestyle except walking continually in God's light and stepping from darkness. Each step to darkness is a further distance from Christ and his cleansing blood. Amen? Each direction we turn from Christ and we go so, we go further from him. And like I said, that is the reason why we have problems when we pray. We're not seeing things manifesting as soon as we pray. Because we must come back to that close relationship. Amen. Remember he said, draw near to me and he will draw near to us. First John 1 verse 7. First John 1 verse 7. He said, but if we walk in light as he that he is in the light. We have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purify us from all sin. So if we walk as he walk in light, we have fellowship with one another and we made clean by his blood. Amen? 
We may not like this, but understand that all the anointing we have doesn't mean anything if we don't walk holy. All the authority to speak in tongues and do all these things we just do don't mean a thing if we don't walk holy. That will stop one day the scripture say. That is not going to take us to Christ or take us to heaven. It is gifts of the Holy Spirit that give it. And as I say, when we practice plenty, we become perfect in it. That is no longer the Holy Spirit giving utterance. We are able to do it. Amen? We are able to do it because we practice in it right through. So it becomes normal. Amen? If we continue in disobedience against God, every feeling that we have when the worship starts and we fall into anointing, it is not of God, it is familiar spirit because we live in all how. Amen? There are believers today, they haven't accept Christ, but they're speaking in tongues. Practice. Amen? When Saul went to look after the animals and he came back, he didn't convert yet. The Bible says he started speaking in tongues because he went into the area where men were speaking in tongues. So all come back speaking in tongues and he didn't convert yet. So speaking in tongues doesn't mean that we are in Christ. It is a gift. And practice make perfect. Saul spoke in tongues and he didn't yet convert or accept Jesus Christ. He went to look for a donkey and come back speaking in tongues. Because he come into contact with the power that is able to do all things. Amen. So don't measure our Christianity because we could speak in tongues. Don't do it. Holiness is what we must measure it by. Amen? And we're going to look at John 4 verse 24. John 4 verse 24. And it says that God is what? A spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So that is how we must worship God in spirit and in truth. Why? Because he is holy. No man can claim to have fellowship with God and walk in disobedience. It's a lie. It don't work. Amen? We could never claim to have fellowship with God and walk in disobedience. It means that we are still walking in darkness and the light has not shined in our life as yet. And if we claim, as some of us do, to say we have fellowship with God, we are a bunch of liars, and it's not me say it. 1 John 1.6. 1 John verse 1.6. He said, if we're walking in darkness and we claim to say that we have light and fellowship with God, something wrong. As many as the unbelievers in this world say today, I just talk to God and all, I just pray every day. So they're claiming to have fellowship with God. But they're walking in darkness. They're doing all manner of things, but they're claiming to have fellowship with God. He said, if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live our out the truth. Because we walk in contrary to what we say. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1. Second Corinthians 7 verse 1. He said, therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves. Who must purify us? We must try, make the effort to do it, to walk obedient. Purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit. Rum doesn't contaminate? Yes, it does. Cigarette, does it contaminate? Yes, it does. Living in adultery and fornication, does it contaminate? Yes, because the scripture says that every sin that we commit is outside the body. But fornication and adultery, we sin against our own body. Why? Because it's not no normal thing, it's a spiritual thing. Amen? There are many people that are, there are more demons on them than anything else because they sleep too much and wrong. Amen? They run too much woman, they run too much man, so they are more spirit than anything else. So we must come away from anything that contaminates both body and spirit. Perfecting what? Holiness. Out of reverence or God. Why must we practice holiness? It's out of the love that we say we have for our God. Amen? If we say we love God, we must practice holiness. Amen? 
So that means when your pastor or apostle or anybody minister in here, you mustn't sit in the crowd and your eyes and then arrow at them. Don't do it. Don't do it at all. Amen? It don't work. Try as you may, it's not going to work. When we get something that will offend us, as I say, we must take it with salt and say thanks be to God and change. The Bible say that whom the Lord love, he do what? He corrects. Amen? He say justice will first begin where? At the house of God before it go outside. He said, you who are believers will face the greater condemnation. Why? Because it's expected of us to walk in pure holiness before our God. So we will be the one that face the greater judgment for our actions. Yes, the unbelievers will go to hell. But we will have to answer why we live a particular way as well. Amen? Number four. Be heavenly minded. Colossians 3, 1 to 10. We must reorient our thinking and living to revolve around the risen God. Not around my house or my car or my wife. Our lifestyle must revolve around God. Not around house, car and all these things. We must be heavenly minded at all times. Because that is where we want to go. We agree. Who don't want to go they say. Nobody. Everybody want to go heaven. Amen. So we must be heavenly minded at all times. Since then you have been risen with Christ. Set your hearts on things where? Above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of who? God. Set your minds on things above, not on things earthly. Not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appear, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. So everything that we have that belongs to this world, we must put it to death. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in this way. Hold on a minute. We used to means it past. We don't walk so no more. Amen? In the life you once lived, we don't live so anymore. Amen? Agreed? We don't live so anymore. But now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these. Anger. He specify now. We talk about sexual immorality. We don't live so anymore. But these little ones, we must read it too. Anger, rage, malice, slander. But talking your apostle, talking about everything that do concern us about he and his family and what all nasty manner of things we like to say. We must rid ourselves of it. And filthy language from your lips. The neighbor tell us something. You curse of the neighbor and mother. Amen. And then you go on your boss and I cuss them up the other day, man. I ring some cuss on them. I fix them well, you know. But how come we don't boast, man? I pray today for somebody and they get delivered, man. I speak peace into somebody's life today, man. How come we don't hear such boasts? But we boast, we cuss up. We fix them. All this nonsense. When the Bible tells us to put these things away from our mouths. Do not lie to each other. Many of us, we lie too much. You have taken off your old self with practice. We must take it off. Amen? We must get rid of it. Number four. How do we achieve holiness? Number five. Yeah. Hold on a minute. I have two more scriptures before I go. I'm going too fast. I want to finish. <laughs> Ephesians 2, verse 1 to 6. Before we go to number 5. Thank you, my sister. Paying attention. That's good. Ephesians 2, 1 to 6. As you who were dead in your transgressions and sin, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world, 
and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. So there's a spirit that attaches itself to things of the world. We agree. That is a separate power from God. So when we attach ourselves to things of the world, that spirit that is separate from God attaches itself to us. Amen? It says we must put away these things of the world and the ruler of the world. It have a ruler other than God. Of the kingdom of the air. The spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. So everyone that is disobedient, you're working under the man that controls the world. Under that power. Amen? So we must come out from that mentality too. In which you used to live when you followed. Next verse, brother. All of us also lived among them at one time. Amen? Gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. Another scripture said death. But because of his grace, love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgression. It is by grace we have been saved. And the next verse said, not of ourselves. Amen? So it is by grace Christ has saved us to walk holy. Romans 6 verse 10. So we were not saved for our own selfish desire. We were saved by grace. Romans 6 verse 10. He said the death, the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lived, he lived to God. So we must live for God. Why? Because we are the mind of Christ. The same spirit that is in Christ is in us. So we must live for God, not for ourselves. Amen? Number five. How do we achieve holiness? Grow in holiness. Growth in holiness is not a one-time fix. It is a lifelong journey. Amen? On this journey, we can get discouraged. Especially when it seems like things not working out or it's not making sense or we're not making progress. We get discouraged. But I have news for you today. Hold on in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen? The Bible says, great is your reward for who persevere. Amen? Encourage one another. Tell one another we look the problems we have because we don't see it. No, I will not know that I just get on grumpy. My wife go tell me that. She said, but you like to quarrel plenty, home, eh? Because I like to make noise to things now. I might come and meet my thing, move for me, and it go on over here. I might just say something that then, you know? She said, but why you just make all these fuss? I will not see that because to me, I see it normal. So what I must do now is say thank you and work on it and fix it. Amen? This is how we must take things when it comes to us. Fix it. Don't continue grumbling and we live it the same way. So we are nasty attitude and we continue in it when they tell we, we must change. We continue in it. We're not going nowhere as believers if we continue. We must change. Amen? Amen. Philippians 1 verse 6. So we become discouraged when we see things not going on this journey of holiness. It's a long journey, but it must end well for us in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Being confident of this, that he who has begun this good work in you. I have news for somebody today. The Lord who has begun this good work, he will continue it till the end in Jesus' name. He said, who has begun this? Be confident of it. Not just anyhow, that he who has begun this work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. May that be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. We cannot depend on ourselves to be holy. It don't work. Ephesians 5 verse 25 to 27. We can't depend on ourselves to make this journey of holiness. We must rely on God. Amen? So we must ask him day by day to carry us to that place. Amen? Ephesians 5 verse 25 to 27. Husbands, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and give himself up for her. It's a hard pill to swallow. Stand up in front of a bullet for your wife. But we must do it. That way you say. 
If we ain't do it, then something wrong. Is that not the word of the Lord? We must do it. To make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. And he's making reference to the wife here, but he's speaking about the body of Christ. Amen? Amen? And to present her to himself as a radiant church. How? Without stain. What is that stain? Nobody will come to church with a white church with a big stain down the front. No, we wouldn't do it. Or with a patch on the back of we clothes, we wouldn't do it unless it's a design. But anything that spoils something from its original form, we will discard it. Not so. So he say Christ is, want us to be radiant without a stain. Or without wrinkle. No man come to church or service with his shirt fully ramful. And he said, uncomfortable. And it ring up all now like he just ring it out a bottle and put it on. No. We of ourselves will not accept it. Bet your money that God don't want it neither. Amen? He don't want it neither. And any other blemish, we know what a blemish is. It spoils from its original state, but holy and blameless. Meaning that no man should be able to point his finger at us and say, this Christian who in church every day carrying the biggest Bible in the world. But nobody could cuss like that person. That is not a good character. Christ don't want it. If he come now, you will be left behind. Even though you accept him, you will remain. Sad to say, amen? But it's the truth. Because if he wants to present us to himself, holy and blameless, we all know what blame is. We could be accused of some wrongdoing, amen? So which means anytime we could be accused of wrongdoing, if Christ presents himself, we will be left behind. We will not be permitted to board the ship. Believer or not, we will be left behind. Amen? Because the scripture said that he's presenting that unto himself. Blameless. Amen? So he wants us to be blameless when he comes. He said in our next scripture that the deacon must be a husband of one wife. Meaning that in other words, we can't have three and four. It don't work. And we're preaching and saying it as well. Permission to marry seven women. Join the Muslim faith. No. One man to one woman. It's scriptural. Amen? It don't work. Next verse. Oh, 27. Thank you. Now we know that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, right? And for forgiveness of sins. Romans 5 verse 6. But I want you to notice that there's a difference between forgiveness and holiness. The two is not the same. The two is not the same. We agree? The two is not the same. When we are forgiven, it means that whatever we have done, Christ remember it no more because we are forgiven. But holiness means that we must preserve the things that we didn't do and he forgive us, we must preserve that way and walk in it continually. Amen? So after he has forgiven us of our sins, we must not go and take it back up and walk in it. Understand? There's a difference. Holiness, holiness is not a thing that happens as soon as you confess Christ. It's a journey. But forgiveness is. Amen? As soon as you accept Christ and you confess your sin, you are forgiven. The Bible said that we are justified, which means you are declared innocent before God of any charges. But that doesn't make you holy. Amen? You must walk on that path to get there. Even though we have been declared innocent, we must walk in that direction to show to God that we have truly, truly forgotten our filthy ways. That we left behind. Amen. Romans verse 7, 14 to 23. Why after you have forgiven? Holiness is not forgiveness. Why? Because the scripture said that we man have sinful nature. We was born that way. Amen. And no matter what we do, without Christ we could never change it on ourselves. We need the glory of the Lord to shine in us every day to sanctify us. Amen? So even though we are justified before God, 
That is good, but it does not make us holy. Yes, we are forgiven, but we are still sinners because of our sinful nature. Not because of nothing we do, but it happened from since Adam days. Amen? So we become holy as Christians in our walk, in our study. As we read, we are transformed. The Bible says we look into the glass, we are transformed into what? The image of God. Amen? As we behold as in a glass, his image, we become him. Amen? Romans 7, verse 14 to 23. And not here, no amen. Why? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Like I said, it's not going to please everybody, but sorry to be it, right? That is how it is. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to what? Sin. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree. That song, I like how I will talk, eh? I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who does it, but it is sin that liveth in me. For I know the good itself does not dwell in me. That is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good. But I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do. But. The evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now, this is a man of God that was fully anointed, making us aware of the circumstances we must transform our life. Amen? Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So, I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For I, for in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me. Weaving, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of law of sin at work within me. Now, this is Apostle Paul telling us that even though we desire to do good, evil is always present. We must resist it in Jesus' name. Amen? We must resist it in Jesus' name. When we do it, when we curse, we carry on. We give in that aspect of the law to work, the sinful part. Amen? So he's making us aware that both is present. How many of us see these little cartoons with two angels? One on the right, one on the left. The devil, they portray one as the devil and one as Christ. Whispering in your ears. Okay, take it for heart. That is how it is. Sin is there, good is there. It is your choice which one you do. Amen? Nobody is going to twist and wring your hand to do the good one. You must practice it yourself. Amen? Romans 8, 28 to 29. Romans 8, 28 to 29. And I'm wrapping up. Amen. Hallelujah. Late bird. And we know that in all things, God works for good of those who love him. So the working of good which God performs is only when we love him. Amen. Who has been according to his purpose? He said in a scripture I read in the beginning that from the beginning of time, he has chosen us a peculiar people, set us apart for his purpose. Yeah. So it is only when we fall into alignment to his purpose that all things work for good. If we're not in alignment, sorry, all things not working for good. We could write it on the back and we can't say it how much we want. It ain't going to work. It is because we are not walking according to his purpose. I forever say, if God want to come and bless a man in sin, he would not have called us out of sin. He would have blessed us right there where we are. But because he's a holy God, we must first step 
out of sin for the blessings to locate us. Amen? Any man that testify God blessing him and he living all out, tell him the scripture says he is a liar. It's not so it work. Amen? It don't work so. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. Second Corinthians 3 verse 18. He said, and we all with unveiled face contemplate the Lord's glory as being transformed into his image with every increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the spirit. We know the other translation where it say. You could give us it please brother. Thank you. King James. This was our scripture last year. He said, but we all with open face behold as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image. Which image God wants us to change into? His image. By practicing what we read in his word. It is the only so we will change into his image. Amen. He said from glory to glory even as the spirit of the Lord. So we must change. How do we achieve holiness? By making sure our soil is fertile for good wood. Pastor Vashi opened up with this this morning. I said, God, he's really in spirit. Amen. We must make sure our soil is ready to grow the trees. Amen. God used many of us in different ways. There are some that are evangelists, some are ministers, some work in all departments. But until our soil is ready for God to plant, he is not going to plant nothing there. Because a farmer, you're not going to plant lettuce in stone. You're not going to plant no crop in any soil that will kill the plant. Amen? So our soil must be ready for God to plant what he wants us to deliver. Otherwise, we will do things on our own and mess things up. So we must make sure our soil is ready for seed. Amen? And we must clearly understand the message being delivered in God's word and sincerely embrace it in order for it to work. Amen? Luke 8 verse 5. Five to sixteen is a long reading, amen. Whenever we twist the word of the Lord to accommodate our wrongdoings, we in for problem. Amen. Whenever we twist the word of the Lord to accommodate our wrongdoings, like I say, we will go and say there's no scripture that says a man shouldn't smoke because we want a puff cigarette. So we will use all kind of twisting to say. They didn't say. God didn't say. Because we want to condone it. We in for problems. Amen. Luke 8 verse 5 to 16. He said a sower went out to sow his seed. And he sown some. Some fell by the wayside. And it was trodden down. And the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon the rocks. And as soon as it was sprung up. It withered away because it lacked moisture. So nobody going to plant anything that can grow in certain places. Amen. And some fell among the thorns. And the thorns sprung up with it and choked it. And others fell on good ground. This is the ground that it must bear fruit. And sprung up. And bear fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried. He, he had as to hear, let him hear. So after he has spoken and probably say, who have ears, let him hear. And his disciples asked him, saying, what might this parable be? So we're going to the English now for we to understand who does be hearted sometime. And he said unto you, it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to the others in parable, that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand. That is why he spoke in parable to them. Amen. But to us as believers we must understand the mystery. And he said unto now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Like I said we must make sure our soil is fertile for the word of God to grow. 
Those by the wayside are, are they that hear it. Then commit the devil and take it away the word out of their hearts. Lest they should believe and be saved. So the devil take away the words with a purpose. That they wouldn't believe and saved. On the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root. Which for a while believed and in time of temptation fall away. And that which falleth among thorns are they which when they had heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring it forth no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they which are honest and good hearts. Having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. No man, when he had lighted a candle, cover it with a vessel and put it under a bed, but set it on a candlestick that they which enter may see the light. So the purpose you must bring forth good fruit is some men to see it and glorify God. Amen? Hallelujah. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Take heed therefore you, you hear for whosoever had to him shall be given, and whosoever had not, for him shall be taken every, even that which he seemed to have. He said, take heed. Amen? This is what I want us to focus on. Take heed to each and every word of the Lord that goes through your ears. Amen? Take heed to each and every word that goes through your ears and practice it. Amen? Romans 8 verse 5. Whenever we twist the word of the Lord to accommodate our wrongdoings, we are in for problems. And we show that we are dying spiritually. You. Romans 8 verse 5. For they that are after the flesh, what did they do? They mind the things that are of the flesh. But they that are after spirit, the things of the spirit. What is this to us today? Is it not spirit in ink? Because we know that this word in the book of John, is said that the word was made life and dwell among us. In the book of 1 John, amen? He said in the beginning was the word and the word was where? It was with God. And the word was who? The word was God. And the word became flesh and dwell among us. Amen? So this word is a living thing. We must make use of it. We must practice it. If we don't, we are dying spiritually. Amen? 1 John 3 verse 6. First John 3 verse 6. It says, Whoever, Whosoever abideth in him, sinneth not. When we stay in alignment with God, sin is far from our thoughts. Whosoever sinneth have not seen him, neither know him. So it is impossible for us to be as believers and still walking in disobedience. Amen. Matthew 15 verse 1 to 9. You can stand up on your feet, please. I'm coming to a close. Amen. Matthew 15 verse 1 to 9. No one who lives in him. He said, then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked. He said, why do your disciples break the tradition of elders? Remember I said, when we start to twist the word of the Lord to suit our wrongdoing, we're in for a problem. He said, why do they break the, the traditions of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. Thy tradition of elders. How many of us following patterns from our forefathers? This is what they used to do, so we continue doing it. Jesus replied, And why do you break the commands of God? For the sake of your traditions. 
he who avails, let him hear. Why do we break the commands of God for our traditions? For God said, honor your father and your mother. And anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. Look at what them say. Traditions. But you say that if any man declared that what might have been used to help their father or mother is devoted to God. This is what they say. They are not to honor their father and mother. Tradition with it. Thus, you nullify the word of God for the sake of your traditions. How many of us nullify the word of God, the living word of God because of our behavior and our traditions? You hypocrite. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. He said, these people honor me with their lips, but with their heart, they are far from me. May we never be far from God in our heart in Jesus' name. May we never allow tradition to cause us to break God's commands. Why I say this to you and to myself, believing in God's word is not enough anymore. Amen? Why do I say this? Let us go to James 1 verse 19. Believing God's word is not enough. And we sit down and say we believe. That ain't working no more. He said, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. That is what he said. Amen? Where are you going to be? James 1, 19. Right. Thank you. James, sorry, brother. James 2, verse 19. But... Thank God you went to that too. Amen? That is very important. Slow to speak. You tie it with the word, there, man. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen? That is the spirit of the Lord we're talking about. One-mindedness. Be slow to speak. Eh? You believe that there is one God. All of us believe that. He say, good. Even the demons believe that. And, and scripture say they tremble. So believing God's word is not enough anymore. We must walk holy. We must obey what we believe in his word. It is only then we can live a holy life and be blessed of God. I'm going to go to Deuteronomy 28 verse 2. And this is the last scripture here and we have four little prayer points. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy 28 verse 2. He said, all the blessings will come upon and accompany you. Where? How? When? Why? Say it with me. Where? Where do you come? When we obey. Who? Me? Yourself? No. The Lord your God. If he is the Lord of our God, we must obey. It is only in obedience his blessing will locate us and come upon us. Amen? Amen? And in our going out and in our coming in, we will be blessed. When we disobey, the blessings wouldn't come. Amen? It is not because God don't want us to have it, but we must fall in alignment with his word. Amen? So I have four prayer points here. The first one, we're going to go to Luke, Luke number 1, verse 74 to 75. Seventy-four to seventy-five. He said to rescue us from the hands of our enemies and to enable us to save him without fear. Amen. In holiness and in righteousness before him all the days. This is how we must walk in order for his blessings. Put your right hand on your head. Say, oh Lord, oh Lord. help me, help me. To, live holy. to live holy in Jesus' name. In Jesus. Repeat the prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, help us to live holy, to walk obedient to your word, to your instruction, to your spirit. 
In the mighty name of Jesus, help us to walk holy. Come on, somebody, open your mouth and pray. Help us to walk holy. Help us to walk holy in our lives, each and every day. Help us to walk holy before you, O oh God. Help us to walk holy. Help our light to shine as a holy nation, as a chosen people before you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. To live holy, we must have a pure heart. Psalms 51 verse 10. To live holy, our heart must be pure. That is the only way we wouldn't think wickedness against we brothers and sisters. Amen. Because he said, out of the heart, the issues of life come out. Amen. He said, create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lift up your right hand again. Say, Father. Father. Create in me a pure heart. Create in me and a pure renew heart. a pure spirit. And renew in a me. Pure spirit. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody, open your mouth. Create in me a pure heart. And renew a right spirit. Create in me a pure heart. And renew a right spirit. In my life, oh God. Create in me a pure heart. And renew a right spirit. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. And renew a right spirit. In me. In everything that I do. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Ephesians 4.24. Ephesians 4 verse 24. Say, and to put on the new self. Created to be like who? God. In how? In true righteousness and holiness. Lift up your right hand again. Say, Father. 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 Help me to put on a new man. Help me to put on created in righteousness created in and, righteousness. In and in holiness in the name of Jesus. In the name Come on, somebody, Jesus. help me to put on a new man created in holiness and righteousness. Help me to put on a new man created in holiness and righteousness. Created in holiness and righteousness. The new man created in holiness and righteousness in the name of Jesus. Help me to put on a new man created in holiness and righteousness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 13, 20. And this is the last prayer point. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Sorry to keep all so long. But it is well. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Proverbs 13, 20. He said, walk with the wise. And become wise. For a company of fools suffer Ham. Say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of separate Jesus. me. Separate from every unfriendly friend. From every in unfriendly the mighty friend. name of Jesus. Separate me from company of fools. Separate me from unfriendly friends. Separate me from a company of fools. In the mighty name of Jesus. Help me to walk with the wise. Help me to walk with the wise. Help me to walk with the wise. In the mighty name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Amen. Hallelujah. As I pray for each one of us, put your hands on your head. Father, in the name of Jesus, you say where two and three are gathered, you are in the midst. And we are more than two and three here. Today, God, by your word, we put to flight everything that represents strong man in our life. Everything that is trying to hinder us from walking a holy life. Today, we reject it in the mighty name of Jesus. Bring our minds, our hearts, and our soul in alignment with your word that we may bear much fruit in the mighty name of Jesus. We seal this prayer with your precious blood. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. As I hand over back to Pastor V, amen. God bless you, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some, a hand clap for that word this morning. He is good, amen. As the Bible says, he that have an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. I want to thank Apostle, um, hear me Apostle. I want to thank Evangelist Marcus. You're walking in that, um, that, that, 
Just now, just now. It could be Apostle Marcus. Hallelujah. I want to thank um, Evangelist Marcus this morning for that word. Amen. I'm sure that somebody here got blessed this morning. Get blessed, got blessed. Old school again. Hallelujah. You, you may all have your seats. We are going for the second part now. Might turn to preach.